Hello, my name is Isaiah, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to flash your video card to a different BIOS. Now, before I get started, I want to warn everybody to not do this. Um, it's strange to make a video about this, but don't do it. Uh, the only reason I'm doing it is because I'm kind of crazy, and this is the stuff I like to do. I am very well aware that it's a $800 video card, and I am voiding my warranty by flashing it to a different BIOS. I also know the risks, like if my computer turns off in the middle of it, I lose the video card altogether. And if you do happen to flash the wrong BIOS to the card, um, you can cause damage to the video card because it's obviously referencing different fans. Maybe it's referencing a different set, set of memory, um, different VRMs, uh, different chips inside there to control the VRMs. Uh, all this is controlled by uh, the BIOS. Now, the one benefit of flashing to a different BIOS is the ability to change your power. So. By default, if you, well, it's not by default, but every brand's different, but many brands are limited to 124 power limit. If you flash a BIOS to say like an extreme one from EVGA, you're allowed to have a higher power limit, which means higher power draw, which also allows you to have higher voltage. Now, often people say, well, um, I can't overclock higher because I have a, my power is hitting the limit or my voltage is hitting the limit. This will allow you to go a little bit farther, uh, but not by much. So to do this, like I said, I'm not gonna provide any links, but if you need to, NV flash is what we're gonna be using. Tech power up is where you get it from. Um, you want to do this in DOS, but you can do it in Windows also. Just be aware of what you're doing. And then for the BIOS, you want to get a BIOS that reflects your video card. So right now, this is uh, NVIDIA Founders Edition, and I'm looking up all the RTX BIOSes, and I found that there's different models. So you keep going down, there's tons of different versions. I have the Founders Edition and it shows you the clock speed and everything. You click on the details and then it tells you pretty much your power limit, everything to do with the video card. Uh, it tells me my power draw limit there and it tells my boost clock. Now, if I go to a different video card, say like the MSI RTX card, you can tell it's a different PCB altogether. It might have the same boost clocks, but it's a completely different PCB. And a good way to find out if you have a different PCB, uh, you can go to EK a website and look up the water block for it. And if there is a water block for it, you can find out if it's a, a reference version or not. And also a lot of time they have pictures. Now, if the pictures don't match the reference pictures of your board, they're not going to work together. Now, EK says they're not making a water block for this card, maybe because of some strange reason, uh, but then you can also find other versions that are the same. Now I know that the EVGA Gaming Black Edition, XE Ultra, and the XE Ultra is a three slot card, do work on this, and I'm going to download the XE Ultra. Once again, make sure it's compatible. So if you download, if you get the picture of it, you see the water block, if it fits a, the reference board, then most likely the reference card will work. So I'm going to download the BIOS now. Okay, so inside NV Flash, I put a folder on the C drive with NV Flash. I'm using the mismatch version because I'm not, I have the Founders Edition, which is not associated with MSI, Gigabyte, or EVJ brands. So therefore, I have to bypass the right protect there. ID mismatch board, and then there's a modified version that allows you to do this. Um, if you don't have to worry about that, that's fine. To do this, you want to go ahead and disable the video card. It's very important if you're inside of Windows to disable it. If you're in DOS, obviously you don't have to do this because you're already in DOS. The reason why you do disable it because your driver is going to mess it up when you're trying to flash it and you don't want any interruption while you're flashing. Next, go to uh, CMT run command prompt. Type in CD slash and gets you to the C drive. Then do directory. Type in DIR. It'll show you all the directories. You see NV flash 64 is my folder, I called it. And then you want to get into that folder. So CD slash NV64. And then the program itself. And then if you do type in the name of the program, it'll show you all the information for it. So that's the commands I want to do is first I want to back up it. So I'm doing NV flash dash B backup dot ROM. You can name it anything you want. By, that's why I named it save image complete. Make sure you have this backed up before you proceed because when you want to reflash your card, you want to make sure that you use the one you had from your video card, not one you download from the internet. It's just easier to deal with than having to find one that's compatible to your card again. Um, I did see a NVIDIA Founders Edition, but it doesn't mean it's the same version that I have. So why risk it? Just make a backup. And then do a flash on doing dash dash protect off. That Well, I didn't do it right. I had to do it. I had to do the whole... Um, name on there, NV flash 64 dash dash protect off. What that does 
it allows me to actually flash the firmware to the card. And then and now I'm gonna actually go ahead and flash it and be flash 64-6 and then the name of the ROM, or whatever I named the file. In this case, I named it evga.rom. Actually I misspelled it. So evga.rom and I hit enter and it goes through all the process. Do you really want to flash this? And you get, yes, I do with Y and then all caps, yes, if I really want to do this. Now this is a point where if you do this, you'll if you do the wrong one, you'll screw up your card. Do you want to replace this one with the next one? Yes, and it's done. Now I need to reboot the computer for it to take effect. At this point, you can still go back if you have to. Once you hit restart, you're out of luck. Now you boot back into Windows. Sorry, it's really blurry because it's 800 by 600 because that's no drivers. If you have the card still disabled, it it thinks I have a different video card on my computer. It thinks I went from a Founders Edition to EVGA card. So therefore, it's trying to like find the drivers for it again. Uh, I found the quickest way to get around this is go to Device Manager and scan for changes. It will basically refresh itself and say, oh, good to go. And then you can go and do this play settings and make sure you have the right size and everything and now in CPU Z you can see that I now it looks like I have an EVGA card and uh, now the boost was much different than before so that's not the big issue and then it's telling me I want to update the LED firmware I ignored that I didn't want to deal with it because I don't know what's going to do in my car but you now see that I have a 130% power limit and then my card does say RTX 280 XE Ultra. It thinks it's a different video card. I also noticed that by default the fans are at zero and this card must have a all stop function when the temperature is low enough or it might be something to do with how the pins are laid out on their board versus this uh, Founders Edition board. But I did know that I, if I enabled uh, automatic fan control, the fans kicked in right away. I also noticed if I go and you just watch it when I'm under load, the fans kick up by themselves. It's just kind of strange to see that this has 0%, but that's just because that cooler is three slots wide. It has enough cooling capacity that it doesn't need to run fans all the time. So when you're flashing different BIOSes, this might be an issue you come across. And here I'm checking to make sure that heaven, when I'm running it, the fans are set to auto. It went to 39%, fans kicking in, and all is good. Now I will say the benefit of this is if you buy the bottom line Gigabyte card or MSI card or EVGA card, you can flash it to the highest model. That is much easier than cross flashing to a different brand because as you see, I had the Founders Edition on cross flashing to a different brand and it can cause issues like fan problems. Just make sure that when you're flashing, like I said, I, said, I don't recommend this, but if you're going to do it, make sure you do the research, make sure you that you're buying, that you're getting a BIOS that's the same as your card. So if you have 15 uh, VRMs, make sure that you get a BIOS as 15 also. Uh, there isn't another card that is like the EVGA for the Win 3. That's a one-off. Um, there isn't one like the Kingpin. There isn't one like um, the Hall of Fame cards from Galax. So really what you're doing is you have to make sure when you're flashing it, you're flashing it to a card that you... Uh, can appropriate. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Once again, I do not recommend flashing your BIOS, but if you have to, this is the way you do it.